And I don't want it to end, it's been brilliant. Yeah, it has been a good show. commentary. <laughs> but now this is our final bout of the evening. I'm excited about this one. Why? Talk to me. Because of Aaron. And what about Aaron that excites you? I'm going to throw this over to you. You introduce me. I've been rattling on for ages. Yeah, sure, no problem. Well, one thing about Aaron you'll see him come out in a minute was he became an ABA elite finalist after nine fights. You don't do that in boxing. Nine fights and become an ABA elite finalist, so it just shows. Another one that's been kept hidden. He fought on the last um, black box card, well, the first black box card, the November heist. What did and you make of it? Yeah, he's a good boxer, 100%. Definitely one to watch. I remember saying that last time. I watched um, a little clip of him earlier, it was absolutely fantastic. He's got the full back of Johnny in there, really. Yeah. It's definitely another boxer, but he packs some power as well. Yeah, when he switches it on. And I'm happy to say that his opponent is not a variation of the snake. He's actually got an opponent that is not named after the snake. Uh, but he did lose to Callum French, and Callum French was a debut to, I think, on December the 11th on a matchroom card. You know, another good fight from the North East. We've got a fight from the Peacock Gym. It speaks for itself, isn't it, Peacock Gym? Yeah, they've got their style. You see them there in their numbers in the corner. Powerful fighter. We'll see what he does. support in the house tonight for him. Massive. You've just seen it erupt behind us whenever they announced his name, innit? Absolute energy. And that's what we like to see yeah. and hear. And a special mention to the fans that have travelled down tonight. All of them in numbers to fill out this show. Every single last one of them makes a difference. That is so true. Seconds out. A fighter needs them on the way through. Here we go. He goes first. 
Prosper straight into it. That was a nice jab just to set the tone. Yep, and jab to the body as well. But straight back to the head. Both fighters seem to be bouncing on their toes. And like many of the guys that have fought tonight, he just seems loose, he seems ready. Yeah. Sometimes you see Prosper, they're very stiff up, they're very, they've waited for the bout for so long and they've, they've amped themselves up for it. Yeah, he's got some power. Prosper has. I know that he will look for the knockout because that's the type of boxer that he is. The Peacock Gym's renowned for that. They like the knockouts and this in is that the gym. Opening. Both fighters keep him busy. What I like about him is he's just edging and just taking a little bit of dominance here. Just slightly edging forward to let him know this is my center of the ring. Yeah, he will do that. Like I said, he's got this power shots, but he needs to be careful on overthrowing his shots as well. He's just got to watch the timing a little bit because he is powerful. Yeah. This is his third bout, isn't it? It's his third fight. Yeah, it is. And I like how um, his opponent has got quite good reactions and he's throwing back, do you know what I mean? So you don't want guys that are just covering up. You don't want guys that are just haven't got any skill set whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? You don't want guys that are too, too negative. You want guys that are going to come at you and make you think and work those things that you've been putting together in the gym. Yeah, absolutely. He needs to stop picking him up, though. The Russian. You get to become quite a wrestling match. You got him with a nice jab to the face. You need to probably need to keep that head offline. Keep moving that head from side to side. He's definitely giving something to, something to think about here. That was a nice, beautiful shot. You know the way that he throws his shot is similar to the way Martin Foru throws his. Yeah. But he's slightly more, he swings more with his. Yeah, yeah. But they've got similarities the way that they're loose. The and they're, right they're, just comes yeah. speedily afterwards, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they just throw into the shots. I mean, he t Aaron seems to uh, throw more jabs. But watch when he throws the one and two, watch how he throws them. And it's quite similar to Martin. His opponent's just making him think with his feints here a little bit. This is where the experience comes in. You know, how many how many bouts has he had? He's got a nice job though. He's not putting everything into it, he's probably putting 70 into it, which is not. about but it's like we're 2022 and it's finally starting two. to get some proper recognition yeah and it's about time i spoke to amanda serrano the other day and she said she never thought that she'd live to actually start to see the equality in the sport but she's grateful that she's going to be able to experience a little bit of it and that is something that all women in boxing can take away from what yeah, she yeah, said yeah, yeah, yeah. as such an icon in the sport herself and hopefully the women that are starting out now really get the benefits of that when they get to that stage there. Do you know what I mean? Paying so, it forward. Yeah, I don't want to wait another 10, 20 years for that to happen. I think it should be happening right now. Absolutely, but we get back to this match. They're both throwing some combinations. And what I like about Aaron is he's not phased. He's still in his face. He's yeah, still he's looking very, to work the job. very poker face. Yeah, and what he's looking to do is bring that overhand right in and just give him something to, to, to back him up with. But this opponent is more tricky, though. You definitely can't switch off with him. Mm. 
Yeah, and, and, and Rustam, I don't think he wants the back up here. He doesn't want to give it up. He doesn't want to start backing up. See, the right hand's making him go back a little bit, but he's like, no, I don't want to surrender that space. Yeah, he's, not go he's not going to. You know, he, he can't come here and just, you know, like I said, just take a beating. You don't know the stories behind these journeymen. He might be coming to win, not just to get a paycheck. You imagine the buzz you get going into a different country and showing up the fighter in their hometown. Well, they probably look at it as a way to get onto the bigger platforms as that journeyman and then Absolutely. maybe get something out of and, it from and there. And get yeah. more money, yeah. He's just got to be careful because that right comes round quite quickly and if he gets caught, do you know what I mean? Yeah, from Might give him something to think about. Yeah, exactly. He's just Double trying to jab. set it up himself. He's trying to step into the jab and then come yeah. round with that right. And he's just trying to time him on the way in. And he's showing, <laughs> he's showing good use of the double jab as well. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? He's, the variation... He's just done it again. Double jab, pushing in with the second. The Sorry, you were saying? No, I just think the variation for Aaron's really good because like, he just stepped in there with the high guard. He didn't throw anything. He just stepped towards him and made, gave him something to think about, like he was going to whip the body shot around. Yeah. And what I like about Ruskin is he's keeping his chin down. He's got the chin down, he's protecting himself, he's boxing properly. And he this is what you want, you want prospects to work for it, because when they get to the bigger stage, they're going to need all this experience to draw back on. Yeah. They're going to need that to say, when I fought Rustam, I couldn't really get through the guard. Do you know what I mean? But then I found the openings. That nice was a jab again. stiff jab from Aaron. And now he's starting to back him up a little bit. He's got some power. You know, Prosper's not a fighter that's weak, he's got some power. It wasn't like he wasn't backing him up before, but he's doing it more consistently throughout the round. Yeah, now. putting that pressure on. Yeah. But what's quite impressive with Aaron as well is he hasn't really reacted too much to the feints from Rustam yet. But now the tides have changed where Rustam is now reacting to Aaron's. And that shows real like IQ and real sort of bravery in there to when he is fating not to flinch, not to give that away to him. And he's got the correct guard for a boxer. Like I said, I'm, I'm finicky on technique. I like to see tidiness. You haven't got to keep your hands up all the time. But what I like to see is chins down, tuck your chin in. If you don't Ten want to get seconds. chopped or uppercut. Seconds out, round three. I'm really intrigued after those first two rounds. I can't believe we're in round three already. Yeah. A lot of these prospects could have fought six, eight rounders. There's not been a boring fight on this card. 100%. You can see Aaron, almost the determination in his face. He's, he's hunting him down. He wants to knock him out. I think the openings are there. He just needs to just just get the work, just put it all together. Because he's setting it up nicely. And then I think he's a little bit too keen with the overhand right, whereas in the first round, he landed really nicely. So yeah. just relax a little bit more. And I think he's gonna I think he's gonna get in there. But you can see the power that he puts into the shot because he's he's often spinning himself around. The the amount of power that he's putting into the shot. Ruskin's throwing in those counter punches. They're both now starting to counter punch each what other. What I like there is he varied it again where he went right to the body, and, sorry, right to the head and right to the body. He didn't fully connect, but he's still giving him more things to think about. So Rustam's thinking, I can't step in. I don't know what he's going to throw here. But they were going toe to toe. We do like a bit of toe to toe action. You know, with a fighter like this, can you keep him at distance? His distance is awareness is very good as well. That was a nice body shot there from Aaron. Nice job. He puts his shots together really well. He just needs to be mindful of overthrowing. Like I said, you see then he turns so much. Just so take a little bit off it and you got him. Yeah. But what I've been impressed with a lot of the prospects on this card is they've, they've shown ability ahead of their experience and years, I believe. Yeah, and, and no signs of ring rust from either of them either. Mature performances. Absolutely. Aaron's got Roscom on the ropes, but he pushes back. 
Yeah, I think you're right. I think if he takes a little bit off these punches, maybe 10%, I think he's going to start connecting combinations. He's just smothering his own work a little bit. Yeah, and it's just the timing. But the Make jab's there. The yeah. setup's brilliant. Making sure that he's in that range. There we go. That's better. Roskam's the type of fighter where you have to go in, attack, and then come back out, reset, yeah, yeah. and then go again. You were talking about it earlier, weren't you, with that McGuigan style and Caroline and yep. Akoli and stuff like that, yeah. Because when we look at Akoli earlier in his career, smothering his work a lot, wasn't he? He and was. And when you watch him when he won the world title, it was in and out, brilliant. Yeah. It's all down to the feet. Beautiful feet, nice. beautiful boxing. Yeah, his distance awareness is very, he's very, very um, IQ fighter, you're right. When I say IQ, he's not an IQ fighter. But yeah, he's got a such an IQ, yeah. yeah. We know what you mean. You've got to be careful. If you said, like, boxing IQ... I don't want the Peacock coach to come for me, because I caught him. <laughs> yeah, you could end up in trouble there. I'd rescue you. You'd be all right. But, yeah, just a final shout-out to our sponsors. Uh, Velicity Care Services, Maurice Andrew Solicitors, uh, Val Sports, Dr. Shear, Timeless Watches Number 1, London Parcel Company, XME, Dirty South Boxing, Whole Nine Management, and of course, Black Box Global. Just like the prospects about the sponsors, we can't do it as well. And what a fantastic way to end the night. You know, we've had some really good performances. I'll say it again, there hasn't been a boring fight on the card. You know, we've seen John Harding Jr. come Ten back seconds. get his deserved win, and now he's on the road. I'm going to ask you a silly Seconds question out. now. What was Four your favourite performance and last tonight? round. You didn't even have to think I about that one. Uh, hands down. With me, it's always been the heavyweights. Um, I am biased. But because I've spoken to Ifib, because I know what this means to him. And to see him put that work in and, and get that stoppage is amazing. As My, a debutant, that is amazing. If you ask me, I'd say John Harden Jr. Not because it was the most explosive and he didn't take the, the guy out, but... I, I like, his story. I like his story, I like what he stands for, and I think for nearly two years out of the ring to come back like that, I think he showed that he, he's ahead of this level. Yeah, it's about mindset, and he's obviously, he's got a strong mindset, there's no denying that, and he's shown that with his patience and how he's come back. He's not a quitter, like he said, don't give up. And that is, you know, perfect advice for anyone. Everyone goes through stuff, but just don't give up. And Aaron here is starting to put it together now. He's starting That's to feel he comfortable. To do, yeah. yeah. I think what's impressive with Aaron is he's worked out a tricky opponent in this last round now. And that is it. It's about learning the opponent. He would have gone back into the corner and got some sound advice. Yeah, yeah. I think we know there would be fighters that have had a lot more bouts ahead of Aaron that would struggle with a style like Ruskin's, wouldn't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely would be struggling. And we've got the, the main man, man Dean White here as well. Just with a brilliant show again. Yeah, really good. Really good, yeah. We're just saying how competitive the bouts have been all the way through, yeah. Really it's good, been a yeah. Really and the opponents good have come to win as well. But I've got to say, shout out to Ify Porter. Ify Porter, phenomenal, phenomenal performance. But we don't want to take the emphasis off Aaron. He's enjoying it there. Yeah, Look, he's, he's smiling to his family outside. Smile coming from him there. And credit to him in four rounds has worked him out a bit. And they are really starting to go for it. And let's give some credit to Rustam as well, who's still last fighting back. few seconds of this round. Ooh, Beautiful really. shot by Prosper to Ruskam's chin. Wow. He is solid. That rattled his face. Starting to see Ruskam starting to breathe a little bit heavy now. And you can see the marking on the face he's got to him now. Yeah. That jab has really worked. It's got sort of, it's sort of almost and sliced across the eye, hasn't it? Yeah, and you can see that he's going more for the clinch rather than the punches. Let's have a look on Ruskam's punch output and see if he's still got that power. Then we'll know how tired he is. See, he's just clinching. And sometimes people tune in and watch performances like this. They buy tickets, they come to shows, and they think, oh, he's not he's not knocked him out, he's not hurt him. But what you've got to give credit to Aaron here is this is a very tricky opponent, and he's figured him out. Absolutely. He's won the mental and the physical battle. And now he's just finding it very comfortable, really. Just doing what he wants. But still can't afford to switch off. Because Ruskin's still a credible boxer. 
Beautiful fight. doors anyway before we go to the post fight interviews and that kind of experience there will stand him in good stead going up the rankings Heading up to the southern area and the English title level, because I mean, we know the top of this division is elite, elite, elite. Josh Taylor holds all the marbles, all and what a fighter he is. You like Josh Taylor, don't you? Absolutely. I like his mindset. He's a strong fighter, he's a fighter in his head as well as he is in the ring. He told me that when he was a kid, he was short. He was shorter than everybody else, and he used to get picked on, but he'd fight. And every time he got dropped, he'd get back up, and he'd keep getting back up until he won. Now that is a fighter. Yeah.